Hi everyone, it's Tim Razor with Revere Asset Management. Just uh, just before here, three thirty on a Wednesday night. It's very quickly, Snyder's Market Lovers. A lot to cover with you tonight. So uh, before we begin, I'm going to talk to you tonight. I want to talk to show you my. Uh, we'll do favorite setup, FS for favorite setup, and then uh, I want to show you my. I had a question come in through the mailbag. ATR uh, setup, how to get that chart set up, and then. The big topic tonight, the big topic tonight, after we run through the indices uh, and some correlations, the big topic, do you want to be an investor or a trader? And I'm going to tell you that this, this right here is a heck of a lot easier, I think, than this. This takes, um, it takes effort, it takes a lot of daily effort. Um, and I view investing as a little bit longer term. I'm going to show you how I differentiate that, how you can differentiate that, and some of my favorite setups within that. Okay, and the market, look, the markets move quick. Even though it's, uh, quote unquote, the slow summer, like this five day move right off the bottom, looks like SPs might break down a little bit further. You guys just got to be on top of things constantly. And if you've got a uh, family, you've got uh, extra critical activities that take you away from the markets, whether it's your job, your family, uh, sports, doesn't matter what it is. It's really hard to stay on top of this. And I know a bunch of people from meeting so many of you over the years from my time at IBD, uh, it can be overwhelming or you just throw in the towel or you take a break and then it's really hard to get back into the group. So I think I can help you tonight. But before we do this, stock nerds, market levers, uh, a little bit of what I'm going to talk about is going to be um, set up by Did You Listen to the Podcast? And so I uh, talked about Don brought up the dollar, really good point uh, in the podcast. A bunch of other things uh, at the top of the show that I think you're going to find interesting uh, with the correlation. So please do give it a watch or give it a listen. Wherever you get your podcast, you can get the Revere Asset Your Money podcast, or you can just go to the podcast tab at revereasset.com and get it right there and then listen, stock numbers, market levers. The biggest difference between us and every shop is, you. well, you won't get 2008, and that's like the biggest thing. I mean, full stop. The biggest thing. If you want that explained, email me, timrevereasset.com, call 855-722-5932. But the people that make the decisions in the portfolios, all the buys, all the sells, what's in their watch list, the, the what, how, and why, we make they make themselves available to you. That is a huge difference. You go to streetadvisor.com, you know, in a strip mall, and listen, you're going to get plausible deniability, meaning they put you in a bunch of mutual funds. Of course, they're not managing the mutual funds. And when you're unhappy with the performance, they just say, we'll switch you out of funds. That manager's a jerk, you know, and, and it's just it's just a, a wheel that keeps going round and round and round. And so, look, we put you in touch with the people that actually manage the portfolios. That is a huge difference. And, of course, if you ever want to talk to us, we're always available to you. 855-732-5932. Don't ever, ever hesitate. Now, look, I like to – email's great, but my inbox uh, clogs up a little bit. Um, I actually prefer Twitter. So if you want to get a hold of me on Twitter, at TJRazor is how you do it. And then you just uh, show up right here under the Messages tab. I get messages all day uh, from investors. I, quite frankly, you're you're very short on uh, Twitter, and I don't mean rudely. I just mean that it's brevity. So you get your question, and I get right back to you. I send you a link that you asked for. Get it right back to you. It's a quick turn for me. It's a quick turn for you because of how short your questions are in that regard on Twitter. So you don't have to follow me. My DMs are open. Uh, and if you don't like Twitter, you're like, I hate social media, Tim. Emails just fine, or just call Danny. Danny, 99% of the time, Danny or Merle's going to answer the phone, and you're going to get your uh, question answered lickety split and the stock nerds and market lovers these videos they are for what they're for your edification purposes only they're never ever to be misconstrued advice if you want advice need advice seek advice in your particular situation i need you to call 855-732-5932 okay 855-732-5932 or or email okay here we go so S&Ps, S&Ps, look, this, look at this great. One, two, so right off the bottom, right? And then you close, uh, I don't know if you close green, but you close, yeah, you close green. So one, two, three, four, five, five, but where are you at? Right in the target zone up here of the second ATR. And you can see these are the S&P futures we're looking at. It's been a long time since we've gotten beyond, I gotta go all the way back here to uh, April, where you had a third ATR move in uh, the S&P. So, are the S&Ps going to pull back or slow down? Look, I don't know. I mean, they can just consolidate up here. But you're getting up to that range that, um, like, uh, NASDAQ is up here at the second ATR. Now, July got up to the third ATR. Maybe NASDAQ has a little bit further to go. We'll see. But it's interesting. You notice the NASDAQ is pretty flat uh, for the day, consolidating. 
and what what was up today. Yes, the TNX. And so so S and P's, I mean, just up ever, you know, a quarter of a percent. But look at the Nasdaq underperforming. Now I get so green. So just take everything I'm saying here uh, with a grain of salt. Don't don't read too much into it. Nasdaq underperformed and TNX is uh, up today. So TNX gets above the mean on a daily chart. Where does it go from here? Well, if the TNX uh, makes a major move, and I don't know if it's going to, if it were to make a major move, a, a, a prolonged move, like, like the TNX did, you know, here, let's see, TNX kind of did here and the market's got a little weak. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe the NASDAQ underperforms a little bit, but it, that, that's, I mean, it's this market has just been amazing this week. I mean, you can't have off the, the move off the bottom the last four or five days has been awesome to see. And so, um, but for me, it's not my favorite setup. And so I like, what do you do in that? Well, you got to go in there and you got to hunt and you got to find uh, the best setups off the daily charts. And, and, and for me, smaller time frame charts in that regard, but that's still not my favorite setup. And then what Don was talking about on Friday, really watch that podcast. Please, please, please do. Here's the Dixie, okay? And look at, look, you can really see this relationship. Dixie pulls back one, two, three, four days. And what has the market done the last four or five days? Right. And so, well, what if, and by the way, it's right at the daily mean. So is this the line in the sand where if the Dix, if the dollar pulls higher, what do, what do markets do? And so those are definitely uh, rates with the TNX and the dollar, definitely correlations, I think. You want to watch, especially the next two days, because I believe Jackson Hole starts tomorrow into Friday. And I'm not sure if Jackson Hole goes into the weekend, but uh, tomorrow into Friday. So let me show you something here. Uh, let's just use the big tech and a couple couple Dow stocks. So my favorite setups, stock nerds and market lovers, are the weekly charts. I Your best moves, yeah, the, e, the easy moves, come off the weekly charts. And so like we'll just stay on the indices here real quick. Uh, let's put in SPY. So the last time on a weekly chart, the um, the SPY came back to the mean. If you're looking here, here's three, two, one, and the mean. And I've explained these charts a lot, right? It's a visual representation. Listen to the podcast. You'll you'll get the explanation exactly of how to use these charts and what they mean and why uh, the the visualization of overbought or oversold is so powerful. With these charts, but the last time that you got a pullback to the weekly mean was back here in November, right? Election week, and also happens to be, I believe that's the week. Or here's the ninth, uh, happens to be vaccine week. We remember that. And so you come here, we'll just pick a midpoint. Remember, with investing, everyone's so focused on precision, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it is hand grenades, not horseshoes. You got to get in the zone, right? They're zones, they're not precise points and if you want precision uh you're, you'll struggle mentally because nothing will ever be the perfect setup it, it, very rarely do you get the perfect entry the perfect sell the perfect buy you, you just you just want to be comfortable with hand grenades and i'm very comfortable with uh, hand grenades and so look when you get a trigger like say a five exponential moving average crossing through a 21 exponential moving average on a weekly chart like that's a trigger got to pull back to the mean now i'm looking for a buy trigger you get the look at this move like and and you have rules that keep you in this move is 35 percent by the way that third number down from the top that's telling you that's a 35 percent move and if you have rules for harvesting gains if you have rules for entry you, this is one of the most powerful setups I know of to the point where I taught a class on this. And so the class is right here, March 24th. If you Google this term, this could be the most powerful and simple stock strategy ever created. I believe I actually sent it out uh, to all the emailers uh, as the latest class link, the latest uh, trade school class link. But if you don't get the emails and you're seeing this on YouTube or some other Format. You could literally Google, uh, this could be the most powerful and simple stock strategy ever created by Tim Razor, and this video will come up. You'll also get an average true range uh, class right here. So you'll get both of them. It's a twofer. You get two classes in one link, okay? You can screenshot this. Uh, you can type it in, come back, to, you know, go to your Google, and uh, you will get this exact class. And it teaches you my favorite setup. But I want to run through things. I want to run through some fresh things for you and just iterate some things from this class, okay? 
that I think will be useful now and what you could look for should you get the pullback, uh, which is going to come eventually. I, I mean, this is an amazing move. This is absolutely stunning. But should there be a pullback to the weekly mean, I want you to be able to strike. And we'll look at some stocks that pull back to the weekly mean. But uh, real quick, before I do that, let me show you how you get these charts, these average true range charts. Uh, and you can do like right here, edit studies. On Thinkorswim, this is how you do it. Uh, on Schwab Street Smart Edge, the, the, the way I have it laid out doesn't exist. And I know it's tough and it's hard to hear. I've, I've tried to make it fit for people. People, I, I've had people sit down next to me and I've tried to make it fit and it just doesn't measure up. So if you have a different platform, I, I just want to apologize in advance. I, you can set this up. I believe in TradingView is a platform, but um, Thinkorswim is how I do it. I'm using Keltner channels. You can see in my exact setup and you can pause the video and, and set your charts up just like that. Everything I use in these videos for you is free. So I make things available to, I, I don't use proprietary information in these videos because I want you to find success. Like that's what our shop is about. Individual investors finding success using free tools like and, and, and applying your brain and being able to apply your brain. And, and for me, I'm a probabilistic uh, trader slash investor. And if you gravitate to that mindset, uh, you probably enjoy my videos immensely. So understanding that at the third ATR, and I've explained this, like in the class at the link that I just gave, I explained all this. So third ATR, you pull back, here's the mean. And look, if you have a rule that says, well, I'm not going to sell, right? So it comes up, pulls back to the mean uh, two more times, and then away you go. If you enter at the mean, which I believe is your lowest risk entry point, you're giving yourself such an incredible fighting chance. If you enter beyond one ATR, two or three ATRs. I don't like entering at one ATR. I, I'm, I'm waiting for the mean. I'm a patient investor. And so uh, you're going to put yourself, I believe, in such great positions. So that's like the SPY. And you can see the QQQ here, which, by the way, is not as strong as the SPY. So here is, if you go back to that uh, November, when's the last time uh, the NASDAQ here pulled back to the weekly? I mean, just, uh, just uh, back in uh, May. So about 20%. So, and you're still in that trade, and those are just two of the indices, but what about something like the, the big ones, uh, Facebook, right? And so here's Facebook weekly mean back in March, and you have to have a trigger. We're going to cover that here in a second. You have to have a trigger that gets you into these things. It's not just that they pulled back to the mean. You need a trigger. I'm going to give you the trigger event here in a moment. You're in 35%. You're still in that trade. Like, think about it. You've covered several earnings periods. It really has been kind of an easy hold and it gets you out of the news. Like this method of investing gets you out of the news. Like you're no longer going, well, Facebook can grow X, Y, and Z. Oh no, the Justice Department has come out and put an antitrust suit against Facebook. And like, it's all this cycle of nonsense and it's it takes you off your goals. You, If you have some rules to say, I buy at the weekly mean, and I harvest profits at three ATR, or I'm trailing up a stop, and we talk about that in the number of it, the two video links I just gave you. Uh, you can you can absolutely, uh, I believe, get some quality of life back in regards to uh, time you spend studying and investing, and all the things that you're trying to do uh, with your life in regards to your family and job. And I, so I, that's why I'm so drawn to this methodology of investing. Like look at Amazon, Amazon. So Amazon is right here, weekly mean, right? So you get a trigger event here. And again, I'm gonna show you the screen that gives you the trigger event, I'm gonna give it to you. So look, trigger event all the way up here, you're looking at 17%, but is Amazon, based on you know how I'm talking right now, is Amazon something I wanna buy right now? No, it isn't. And by the way, not advice. If you wanna buy some advice, seek advice, I need to give you a call because what we're talking about, my friends, is edification. So no, it's not above the mean, and there has been a trigger event. And so I don't want Amazon. Amazon is a laggard. How about, and, and Facebook is extended. So how about Apple on that weekly chart? Same thing with Apple. Apple's extended. Beautiful consolidation on the weekly chart, though, by the way. But look at the weekly move. You get a trigger event, right? And you're up, what, 16%, 17% in Apple. And so well, Tim, that was just tech stocks. Does it work for anything else? Sure it does. Um, how about... Uh, Caterpillar, uh, just off, let's look at Caterpillar. 
So Caterpillar has it. Yeah, like I'm not in this. I mean, would I be in this based on is it above the mean? Do I have a trigger event? I can tell you right now there's no trigger event. So you're you're avoiding that. How about deer? Yeah, like if you get the trigger event, uh, you're what right here? So you're at seven percent. Not bad, better than a stick in the eye. And so how do you find these type of setups and what is the trigger event you're looking for? And so let me show you the scan. So the scan, uh, once upon a time, I called it a summer romance uh, screener. And so I taught a class, summer fling, summer romance. Fling is a fling, but romance, right? Like, uh, like what, Greece with... Uh, uh, <laughs> Olivia Newton John and uh, John Travolta, right? That's a romance that lasts forever. And so, uh, hence the summer romance. And so, but the trigger event. So, I'm looking for stocks where I've got a five moving average, right? A five exponential period moving average crossing above a 21 period exponential moving average. And it's a weekly, it's on a weekly chart. So, now I've got stocks that are already pulled back to the mean. Or approaching the mean and now I'm looking for positivity I'm looking for momentum to the upside on that weekly time frame I screen for that and then what do I do I get pop this out I come to charts and then I've got this linked up so if you're got thinkorswim you just link up color to color here I chose the wonderful color of lilac number nine on your uh, bingo card at home and so I'm gonna click here you see the chart change and now look is this something to, to watch? Maybe, right? I, this is what, ACMR. And so I looked at what? What was the criteria for this screen? So stocks that are above $12, at $12 and above, 300,000, okay? And I haven't even applied any fundamental criteria to this, okay? So you can add fundamental criteria to your screen. And I'm just looking right now for technicals. If I want to screen for fundamentals, I do what charts might have, the, what, what companies, what stocks might have the best chance to accelerate, um, with stronger fundamentals, I can then go in and do more in-depth screening, okay? So we're looking for a 5 eight cross, and these stocks are going to most likely be in and around the mean. And if they're not, and they're already extended, we just bypass them. But this AMCR, yeah, something I might want to study. How about this app? Now, like, I'm looking at this chart. It's clearly a newer issue up at the up at the plus one ATR, two ATR, yeah, no, plus one ATR. If you want to watch it, watch it. But for me, I'm looking, I want things closer to the mean. Like Adam, ATOM, okay? How about BBY, reported earnings? Yeah, it's a little extended for my me, for my like, you know, on the weekly. I want to get them here, but, you know, Best Buy just reported earnings throws this off. I don't like to initiate in and around earnings because earnings are, you know, they're binary, right? It, it, it can be great earnings, but the market doesn't take it well. And you want to be cognizant of that. This isn't for me. I can just tell by looking at the chart. Neither is this. BYD, Boyd Gaming, that's interesting, right? That's a really nice consolidation starting to try to move higher. Uh, let's see what we got here. Cirrus, uh, Cirrus Logic. Interesting, right? Is it going to peak above? Are we going to get the moving average cross now? Is this the week that it starts making its move? And you can just watch these things and you can set up alerts on your charts. DBI, let's see here. That's so earnings, earnings are red. Nope. On 31st next week, DraftKings had a huge day, right? DraftKings had a huge day, uh, and that's news driven. Uh, here's a bank. Pay attention. You're going to see a lot of banks in this, I believe. And so, um, what is this first financial? So you know, you already know the screening criteria. It's above 300,000 uh, in terms of 300,000 above volume, above $12. And so um, you can also develop themes on what might be getting ready to move. That's a hint, right? And so that's not a bad looking chart. How about uh, Pfizer in the financial space at plus one ATR? Uh, would have you would prefer to want to get it accelerating through? Then you're like, well, Tim, what's the difference between 113 and 118? And, and sometimes not much, right? And so if you like it, if you see a setup, you don't like it, I say get it. Uh, GBTC, Bitcoin, eh, doesn't really do much for me. That's the Bitcoin ETN. G3 is apparel. Those are T-shirts. That's a nice looking setup right there. Gone. Whatever this is, is gone. BY, uh, Huntington Bank, Huntington Bank, mm, another bank. Um, already at plus one ATR. Herbalife, interesting. Is that going to accelerate higher? And look, uh, the screening process gets you to look at things you might not look at or have judgment against. A lot of people are polarized by Herbalife. Hewlett Packard Enterprise, I believe, is not reported earnings. 
Earnings are a ninth too. So getting close to earnings consolidating, that kind of takes it off the list for me. Key bank, another bank. Hmm, three banks already. Interesting. Is something happening potentially with rates tomorrow or Friday? I don't know. Maybe it's on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Key bank, nice looking setup. Earnings, you can see the earnings are right down here, but not till 10. So that's enough time for me on that. Whatever this is, yum, baby gone. Uh, Live Nation, interesting. You know, that's interesting, right? Because you might say, who's going to concerts? Live Nation does live, live uh, music and, and whatnot. Uh, with this Delta variant, but all it's doing is consolidating. You might think it uh, should be selling off into hell and damnation, but no, it's holding up pretty strongly. That's interesting. Uh, microchip, interesting chart right there. So the look at this M uh, M Y O V. These are the set. This is this is my jam, right? Doesn't look like much, and weekly charts move slower. Octa, is that earnings? That's earnings today, isn't it? Earnings this week? No, earnings next week. Octa moving ahead of earnings. Uh, PI, Magnum. Uh, let's see, that's plan. Let's see. Rhea, that's not for me. Piton is interesting. Hmm. We'll see how that works. Uh, let's see, our Richie Brothers auctions. They do equipment and automobiles. Regions Bank, another bank. Is that our fourth bank catching what might be happening? Scan sources and gone, baby. Ask Sony. Eh, okay. Uh, Truist is another bank. That's six, is that five or six? Six, six banks, I believe. Six banks already. And this is not a very long screen because we're at the T's already. So you can catch, um, are they front running it? Does somebody know that workday chart? Super interesting. Uh, WFG, yeah. So we, that was not a very deep screen and we had like six banks. So you can see that, okay, rates are moving up. We showed you the T next at the beginning of the chart. We ran through a scan of weeklies, right? And so let's go to T, uh, let's go to this T chart. Take a look at it one more time. So TFC, so we'll minimize this. And now let's go from a weekly, let's go to a daily chart. And so, yeah, it got up to the two ATR, pulls back. Uh, now it's at this plus one ATR. Now is it getting ready uh, to make a move higher? Like the weekly chart, uh, is it getting ready to make a move higher? Is it kind of trading like rates? And so, yeah, so if the rates move higher, that's really beneficial for what? The Goldman Sachs of the world, which is, let's look at this on a weekly chart. So it's, uh, I'll just consolidate into those highs. How about JPM? JPM, Goldman Sachs can do well without the rate move. JPM is consolidating ahead of earnings. How about WFC Wells Fargo? Yeah, yeah. And so they're not really, they haven't really come back. Like, look, they, they came back, back in July, they came back, 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 back in July, and now they're, you're still up 10, 11%. So the, I think your best entry is the mean, the 21 exponential moving average, whether it's on a daily chart or a weekly chart. And I think you gain some of your life back by screening for charts on the weekly mean, and I show you how to do it in this video and then I go over uh, the blue sky setup off the ATRs in this ELO stock setup video. So Stock Ninja Market Lovers, I love you. You know I do. Any questions on this? If this was confusing, if it doesn't make sense to you, if it's disjointed, if you hated it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It matters to me, but what ma it matters to me that you get your questions answered. That's what matters to me most, that you get your questions answered and that you're heard and that you know that there's people here, whether you're clients or not, that are absolutely invested in you, uh, finding success, getting more success, uh, just getting better a little bit every day. So we're absolutely here to help you. So with that, I hope you have a great night, and I will see you at the next update.